Hi, you guys. How are you today? Welcome, welcome back to It's a New Day with Lovely Waters. Praise God. I mean, praise God for all he has done for us since we, we were here last. Let us worship him in spirit and truth. The word of God says, Jesus told the people that a time would come wherein the true believers would worship him in spirit and in truth. I have been praying for everyone, amen, and I will continue to pray for everyone. And today, I'm going to continue the series that I began last time, which is, come on, come on in this house. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I hope that you guys enjoyed that lesson and that message that was sent out. And again today, amen, I'm going to continue. I'm going to take a little bit of a, 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 a twist here today. But nevertheless, our message is come on in this house. Last week or the week that I was here last, I wanted to try to jog people's, their, their, their spirits to, to wake up and say, okay, look around, be uh, aware. Let us wake up and know that this is time to refocus, time for us to meditate again on the things of God. Take note, praise God, that God's word is fulfilling itself right before us in Jesus' name. So we talked about coming in the house, amen, meaning that, you know, the sun is going down and time is winding up. And so, therefore, we want to be found worthy. Even though that, that's almost impossible, but because of God's grace and because of his mercy and because of his undying love, God sent his son so that we, praise God, would not have a cloak for our sin, but we would also, but we would be having, having, be given an opportunity for eternal life. So I beckon you today. I admonish you. I am calling out to you and you and you and you to think about what God has done and to remember his word. Let us open, praise God, with God's word today. God's word today is coming from Galatians 9. Amen. Galatians 6 and 9, saying that let us not become weary in well-doing, or we can say it another way, let us not be weary in doing good, in doing good things, in living righteous living. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. And that's coming from Galatians 6 and verse 9. We have to remember what we, that we're on a journey. We have to remember that, praise God, we will be held accountable, praise God, for the work, praise God, that God has given us the tasks, the mission, praise God, amen. And we have to keep ourselves mindful. So I'd like to open in prayer today. And I'd like for you to take a moment to bow your heads with me or just a quiet moment. To, ign to acknowledge the Lord and to go before Him in our with our hearts, praise God, in our hands. Father, we thank you today. We thank you today for this day. For this is another day that you have graced us with. Father, this is a day that we didn't even know we were going to see. But by your grace and your mercy, Father, you saw fit today to give each of us life. Father, today we call on you 
asking you to redirect our steps. Asking you, O oh Father, to Lord Jesus, re help us refocus. Help us, O oh God, to, Lord, begin to meditate on your word more. Help us, Lord Jesus, to look around us and see, praise God, that the signs are all there. And that, Lord Jesus, that, Lord God, that our hearts, O oh God, Lord Jesus, need to be made whole. They need to be cleansed. We have to begin, Lord, with humility. Father, help us to humble ourselves. Help us, Lord Jesus, to submit our will to your will. Help us to be real in our seeking for you. Help us, O oh God, to Lord Jesus, truly, Lord Jesus, pray for our own selves, Lord Jesus, because Lord God, we don't, we can't count on the prayers of others. So we come for ourselves today, Father, asking you to help us to not get caught outside. Help us, Lord Jesus, to come on in the house, Lord, while we have time. In the name of Jesus, pray for our young people, Father, today that are so confused, Lord Jesus, that are walking in darkness, Lord, that think that they're right when they're wrong, when they're lost, oh God, even, Lord, our children, regardless of what age today, Father, we pray, Lord, that their souls, oh God, will make their way into your kingdom. We pray today, oh God, in all earnest, Lord Jesus, that you will do a work in their lives and that, Lord Jesus, you will turn around and use them to continue to keep the work going forth until you appear in the sky. Oh, God, today we pray, Lord, for all of the troubled people, Lord, in the Ukraine, all of the people, not just some of the people, but, Lord, the black, the white, the Asian, the Hispanic, Lord, all of your people that you created. Oh, God, for Lord Jesus, you love us all. Help us to remember, oh, God, and that we should look, Lord Jesus, at everyone, that we should look about us and, Lord, help us to see again. Lord Jesus, that we all are your children in the name of Jesus. Oh God, today we pray that your word, Lord Jesus, will warm our hearts and that your word, Lord Jesus, will motivate us, oh God, to Lord Jesus, Lord, seek a clean heart. And Lord Jesus, receive from you a right spirit. In Jesus' name we pray today. Lord, we pray for our government. We pray, oh God, hallelujah, for this is for such a time, oh God. We need you in the White House, oh God. We need you, Lord Jesus, in the in, all, in every aspect of American life, in every aspect of life. Lord, on this earth, in the name of Jesus, O oh God, make us strong, O oh God. Lord Jesus, we ask you to quicken us with the power of your hand. O oh God, we thank you today, O oh God, and this is another day that we want to lift you up. This is another day, O oh God, that we want to magnify you. This is another day, O oh God, that we, Lord Jesus, want to seek you. And Lord, we are hoping in you for your care, for your protection, for your guidance and your direction. And that the love of Jesus, O oh God, will be, Lord Jesus, our saving grace. In Jesus' name, Father, we pray. All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to start with the uh, introduction here. You know, I'm trying to get this thing down. Okay. I'm trying to get it down to where I'm not running out of time. I only have 30 minutes and I hope that one day by his grace, God will bless me to have more than 30 minutes. So I won't be just, just going on and on and on. I know sometimes you guys say, wow, that lady's moving fast. But I just have so much in my heart that God has given me to give to you. Praise God. Because I want to be a blessing. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I want to plant seeds. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I want to begin with my introduction. I, as, I, as I say 
uh, the series is Come On in the House. Amen. Come on. And I talked about how mother used to call us in the house. And I, many, many of you, I'm sure when, when time got, when the, it get, began to get dark, you know, sometime our mother and our father or our father would come and call us in. Praise God. And God is calling us in. Amen. To rework this thing. We still have time. Let's run in. Let's go on in before it's too late. Amen. So I want to begin by uh, today. Uh, and today our lesson is entitled God's Great Reckoning. Amen. Meaning that God has a time when he will judge us. He will judge his people. He will judge the world. Amen. Let us remember that, that God has a great awakening, that there shall be a great awakening when the time is done and it's time to go before God. Amen. And we have to make an account for our ways. God's judgment, the meaning in uh, calling it as the last judgment, uh, the last judgment of God during which everyone, every human being in politics, in community life, in, 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 in our cities, in our states, in our country, in our world, everyone, praise God, will have to come before God. Everyone after death and those that will be here when he comes is called to account for their actions committed in this life. I also want you all to know, again, this is entitled A Day of God's Great Reckoning. Amen. A day of reckoning is coming. Amen. It's coming. It's coming for me. It's coming for you. It's coming for all of the people of the world. So I also want to start by saying that, you know, we live in a dark world. Praise God. A dark and a cold world. Amen. Where we see hatred. Where we see um, uh, people fighting and killing. Where we see uh, that people are selfish and greedy, where we see people dying, where we see war is on, uh, the, uh, um, uh, is escalating. Praise God. And we hear of rumors as well. We live in a time where we can't, we, we can truly say in a lot of instances that we sometimes wonder if that person or people that we thought were our friends, if they really are our friends. Praise God. We even have people in our families, praise God, that no longer have the love of Christ toward us. We see that our families are falling apart and there's so much unforgiveness, praise God, until where people go 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, and sometimes even I've heard 50 years where we refuse to forgive. We refuse to love. We refuse to repent. We refuse to realize that all have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. And God is not pleased. God is, I tell you, he is angry. God is angry because we have persisted in our evil, wicked ways. And we have to be humble. We have to be, it takes a humble person to acknowledge when they are wrong. It takes a humble person to accept another person, even when they know that they were wrong. But yet, forgive and strive to forget. And even if they can't forget, but take it as a word of wisdom and understanding, but yet can make up their mind, have a made up mind to say, I'm going to love you in spite of it all in the name of Jesus, because this is the will of God. I also want to go on 
Amen. And I want us to look at, when we talk about humility, I want us to look at Daniel 4 and 37. And I also want to bring up a man by the name of Neb King Nebuchadnezzar. You know, King Neb Nebuchadnezzar, he was a high-minded king. And that was his, that was, that was his, his, his downfall. But God loved even King Nebuchadnezzar. And after God had worked with him in so many ways, he came to a conclusion. God humbled him and he brought him down off of his high, high, high horse. And you know, he had a testimony and King Nebuchadnezzar, he spoke with praise and he said, now I, from Daniel 4 and 37. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, I even praise and extol the honor, the king of heaven, all whose works are truth and his ways judgment. And those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. So I want to begin there because the last, in our last lesson, one of the things that God was dealing with me about is that we need to remember, praise God, of who God is, what God can do and what he's willing to do and what he has never withheld from us. His word has, will not change because God is an unchanging God. For God told us that we must come to him in humility, that we must humble ourselves. We don't want, I know I don't want God to humble me. I, I've always felt that way when I thought about it. You hear me? When I really thought about it, I had it. I thought one time, many years ago, I said, you know, what do I, what would I rather have? Me to humble myself or for God to humble me? And you know, I came to a quick, praise God, understanding and a quick decision that I'd rather humble myself before God to his will, to his ways. Amen. So I also want to hurry on because I know that, uh, like I say all the time, you know, sometimes I just get caught up and I forget the time that we, that I'm dealing with because it's so much in my heart. And there's, I know it's so much that God himself wants us to know and what he wants to remind us of. Because some of these things might be new for some of you, but for most of us, or I should I say a lot of us, praise God, they're bringing God is bringing them back to our memory. He's bringing them back to our remembrance. So I just want God to be glorified in all these things because, you know, I've, I've said that for years because my, my life, again, is not my own. My life, praise God, amen, is to be used to serve and glorify God in every way that I possibly can. Okay, so let us go to our message now. Our message is coming from Matthew 25. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, I, 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 you know, when I talk about a dark world, you know, I think about, amen, <clears throat> how, um, you know, Jesus, Praise God, briefly. Jesus was the light. Him and his father saw how dark the world was and how people were just totally just participating in all kinds of evil and wickedness that they could possibly find. Amen. And so, you know, that's why um, God wants us to know today, amen, uh, that Jesus, God sent his son, amen. He sent his son that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. I also want to say that in the very beginning was the word. Amen. And the word was with God and the word was God. And all things were made by him and, and without him was not anything that was made. Amen. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Excuse me. So I want us to go on and say that in him was life. And even today, in Christ Jesus, there's life. 
There's life for us. There's hope for us. Praise God. And the life was the light of men. There's the light, you guys. The only light in this world is the light of Jesus Christ. So he came into a dark world and he's still here in this dark, dark world. Amen. Beckoning, calling us to repent, calling us to submit, calling us to follow him. Amen. And it says that the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. Amen. So we know. Praise God that God is light. He brought light into a world that's dark, that's full of darkness. Our message is coming from Matthew 25. Let me go quickly here. Amen. So I want to read some things. We're going to make a recap and then I'm going to let you go. But I hate to let you go, but I'm going to let you go in the grace of God. I want to begin at verse 14 and it said, for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And God has done that. He has delivered to us when he left his goods and as good in all of us. It used to be a saying it's good in the hood. Well, it's good in all of us, no matter where we live, whether we live in the hood, whether we live uh, in uh, Hollywood, in, in the fabulous uh, 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 places of, of, of wealth and, and uh, uh, aristocracy, there is good, praise God, everywhere in each of us. No matter how we sometime appear or how wicked we be, there is still good because the word of God said that. And unto one he gave five talents, unto he, he gave five talents, and to another he gave two, and to one other he gave one. To every man according to his ability. And straightway he left. Jesus left. And he took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. Praise God. And likewise, he that had received two, he gained another two. But he that received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants, he came back. He cometh and he reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought those five talents and said, Lord, thou gave unto me five talents. And behold, I've gained beside them five more. The Lord said unto him, well done, thou good, thou faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. Amen. And now I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. And he also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. But behold, I've gained two other talents beside them. The Lord said unto him, well, good, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I too will make thee ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of my Lord, of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man, re reaping Amen. Where thou has not sown and gathering where thou has not strawed. And I was afraid and I went and hid my talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, thou wicked and slothful servant. Thou knowest that I was, um, uh, thou knewest that I would reap where I soweth and gathereth where I had not strayed. 
destroyed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the money changers. Thou, excuse me, thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers. And then at my coming, I should have received mine own with usury. Meaning there should have been an increase and there should have been increase along with interest. Take therefore the talent from him and give it to him that hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given. And he that hath abundance, but from him that hath not, shall be taken away and given to that who hath. And so he told him, he said, now cast him. Cast it the unprofitable. You are servant. here. Amen. Moving in Cast him into other darkness where there I'll will be weeping and gnashing you. of teeth. I'll God wants us to know you. that you each of us have been given a talent. Working and some of us have been place. given more than others. But that's you. not the issue here. Because we can, it, it doesn't matter how many he, talents or, that he has given us, Moving but these talents that he has, that we, he, that he has given us, are to be used to gain I more talents. Praise God. Meaning that you the talents that he gave, he didn't leave us empty. He gave every human talents, whether, whether it be one, whether it be five, ten, however, he gave us talents. And we were supposed, we are to use them to draw, praise God, more for God, to return it to God. God wants to return on, praise God, his investment. God has invested in us talents. And it don't matter how many, because we can take one thing can, that has only one talent, can take that and bring many talents unto him. So we're going to talk about the talents again somewhat you when we return. But I want you to know that God is expecting a return on what he's invested in us. So I'm going to say, praise God, you guys have a blessed rest of the day. And you guys remember that the great day of God's reckoning shall surely come. And may God love you. And I love you also in the name of Jesus. Have a great and a wonderful day. It is a new day. I love you guys. Promise keep light under darkness.